No matter how dark things seem to be Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Join us now to hear great and mighty things that have happened in the lives of people who have been changed through our Lord Jesus as they share their testimonies of how God answers prayer. Well, welcome to God Answers Prayer. I'm Linda Tiano, your host today. We're so happy to have you with us today. And, you know... Again, just filled with the goodness of God. I don't know if you've heard that song. I, many of you, I'm sure, have. But just, it's called The Goodness of God. I encourage you to look it up and listen to it. Because all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. All my life, you have been able to show me the goodness of God. And so, He is good. He does answer our prayers. Our scripture today is found in Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14, which says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. You know, there are those that unwittingly choose the wide gate and experience a life they didn't think that they were choosing. So many things seem wrong. However, God answers prayer and He brings deliverance, healing, and a way that ultimately leads to joy and true freedom. Pastor Billy Williams is here to share his story and why this verse is very real to him and the reason he is passionate to share how you too can have true freedom. We'll be right back after this. Lord, we praise, praise to the one, to you, Lord, for you sent us your son. Praise, you can praise him with him. Praise, praise him out of your heart. He knows when it's sincere. He knows when it's from your heart. In one accord, we praise you, our Lord. There is no other name above you. There's a little lady right now praising him, and the Spirit of the Lord just showed me. You got your hands up, and he knows about it. Blessed be your name. Pour your love out to him this morning. He's the God of Jacob. He's the shepherd of Israel, holy unto your name. Holy unto your name. Your son, we praise, we praise, praise, Lord, we praise, we're in one accord, and we've come to New Mexico to praise you, our Lord, and may all glory, may all honor, may all power. You're the same God of Abraham, and you're 
faithful and oh yes you're true holy lord good and holy are you holy holy are you for you're the son of righteousness and you're that lamb who was slain and you're the lily of all the valleys you're my bright and morning star you're the beginning and you're the end and you're the everlasting father and you're the god the god of all glory you are my healer you are the king of kings you're my deliverer and you are my friend and you're that sweet rose of Sharon and you're all love and you have all power and oh you're merciful Lord but mighty and you're the redeemer of all mankind and you are that lion the lion of Judah and the ruler of this whole universe and you are the most high you are our soon coming, soon coming King. Holy Lord, holy your name. Holy, holy is your name. Here we are back, and um, Linda Tiano, your host today. We have Pastor Billy Williams with Unity Christian Fellowship. Actually, Pastor Billy has a program here on KCHF TV 11. It's called Living on the Narrow Path, and it comes on on Tuesdays at 10.30 p.m. and Thursdays at 5.30 a.m. Well, it's good to have you. Oh, I'm humbled. Thank you for I'm having me. I'm <laughs> looking forward to hearing your story. You know, Pastor, it's so wonderful. You know this. I mean, everybody has a story. Yes. And it's unique. It's beautiful. I mean, when we think about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, yes. the God that we serve, that He loves each and every one of us, and that He's made us so unique, and He's given us a unique story to share that no one else is going to have exactly the same story. It might be close, but it won't be exact. It won't be exact. <laughs> yes, You're right. So tell us a little bit about your life. Did you grow up out in California? I did. I grew up in Los Angeles, California. I was born in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, and it, the book that, I'm all, that I wrote also explains how I got from Las Vegas to California. But I was raised in California, uh, not with my birth parents. I, I was... Um, selected as a child by another group of parents that took very good care of me. Uh -huh. And so that's where I started. Beautiful. Yes. So were they believers? Yes. Oh, yes. My mother and, and, and father were definitely believers in the church. Uh, I was in Sunday school. I was a YPD. I was a youth choir, youth, choir, mm -hmm. um, youth usher board. <laughs> all the way. I mean, all the way. I, I, I started from four all the, what I can remember all the way up. Okay, so you so you had a foundation, but when when did that really um, when did you really know that you needed a savior? Um, this is this is very touchy because I thought I was serving God mm -hmm. during that time, but mm -hmm. my life didn't reflect 
what the Bible said I was supposed to live as, right. as a believer. So I still had a whole lot of consequences. I had a whole lot of stumbling blocks. I had a whole lot of issues. So until I truly surrendered to God, and this was in my 30s while I was in the wheelchair, uh, I surrendered to him, and that's when I saw the truth. And I, start, I, I laid aside everything that he told me to, and then I chose to follow him 100%. So, so in my 30s, 33, <laughs> yeah. 34, I believe, is when I truly ah. understood. So what branch of the military were you in? United States Army. Good. Yes. Thank you for your service. Oh, thank you for your support. And we, yes, thank you, thank you, Lord, that you used that to bring you to the to him. That's correct. So tell That's us correct. about that experience. What happened? Uh, I got hurt in Panama, mm -hmm. and um, doing one of the missions, I did several missions with Delta Force and certain missions. I was a supply guy. I wasn't an infantry guy. I was a supply guy, but we work hard um, to supply what what the troops need. Uh -huh. And so um, one one one. Horrible day in in Panama. I got hurt, and I was not a. I had four surgeries later. I was not able to walk. Wow. Yes, and they told my wife he'll never walk again. Uh, we have a, a wonderful relationship, so they were like, "Oh, you guys are happy. You know, things will be fine, and you, you know he'll never walk again. But you know, you guys have a good relationship with God. You have a good relationship with each other, so you'll be okay." And my wife had a dream prior to us marrying, she didn't know who the guy was, but they were standing and hugging her while she was washing the dishes. And so when I asked her to marry me, she wasn't sure if I was the guy because I was in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. But she married me anyway. And so after a lot of prayer, after some healing and some miracles, there was some steps I had to take. My wife helped me get off the Oxycontin and the Respiridol and the Paxil. I was on a cocktail. Mm -hmm. and my wife helped me get off of those things and my nerves repaired themselves and I'm able to walk again. Now I still have problems. I still fall. I have a cane that I use sometimes, mm -hmm. but I'm not 100% in the wheelchair all the time. Hallelujah. And you're, you're on your way to being 100% healed. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so <laughs> the vision happened because I'm not in the wheelchair. Uh -huh. I stand, she's washing dishes, and I stand up and I hug her, and she just bawls and starts Aww. crying because this is what she saw. Yeah. And so wow. she knows she made the right choice. Yeah. Hallelujah, good job, honey. <laughs> <laughs> good so, job, honey. <laughs> so how did you, how did you two meet? Uh, we met online. Really? Believe it or not, yes, ma'am. It was online, and for 11 years, God has blessed us. Mm. Hallelujah. Wonderful. And uh, I know you've got grandbabies now. Yes, we do. And we have a, a granddaughter, Layla, who is now uh, six years old, and a, a newborn, uh, a month. And his name is Yokuna. A young Great. Man, yes. Great. So tell us a little bit about um, how the Lord brought you you know, into ministry. I mean, you, you, you mentioned that he blessed you with a godly wife. Yes, finally. I, uh, this was my, my, my third wife. So I messed it up a few times. And mm. so <laughs> I got it right this time. Amen. Hey, he's, yeah. he's the God of well, ministry second started and third years, chances. Right, right. <laughs> plus, plus. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, the ministry started years ago. I was ordained, um, in 2001, mm -hmm. hallelujah, in an, in in a religion uh, in a AME church, and then I left the AME church and started to follow God on my own, and that's when the deliverance happened through the wheelchair and uh, being one on one in His Word, and mm -hmm. there were several Bible studies He took me through, um, and to redirect what I was taught by man, and because I kept I asked Him, I said, Lord, why? Why are these things happening at a rapid pace? You know, why, why isn't the healing, why isn't the manifestation of the Holy Spirit showing in my life like the Bible says it should? Mm -hmm. We should be operating in that mm -hmm. power. We should be operating in his, in his spirit. And he says, because you're, not, you're listening to man and you're not listening to me. And so it took me, I went through a three-year sabbatical and I got into his word. And that's when I really learned what his truth was. And he showed me the narrow path in Matthew Amen. 7. Amen. So in that process, did you encounter deliverance? I, oh, yes. 
For sure. Uh, deliverance, uh, actually, uh, with completion of the book as well, because now I know where I come from. Now I know who my real parents are. Mm. I know how I came about. Those things, believe it or not, do matter. It, they do. To a person. And mm -hmm. so when you get this closure, there's nothing hindering you now from really following God the way He says. Well, life begins at conception. Huh. Very you good. know? Yes. And so. All of everything that that makes you into who you are is there, yes. whether we know it or not. Yes. And 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 the Lord talks about generational things yes. as oh, well. For sure. Yes, ma'am. So um, you know He has. I know there's a number of prophetic people right now that are saying that the times that we are in are going to be times of deliverance. Yes. Because it's so needed. It's so needed. It's so needed, yes. and 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 people are afraid of it. I think. And yet, That's fair. you know, when Yahweh does it, it's so gentle. It's so wonderful. It is. They don't realize how, how peaceful and how joyful mm -hmm. and how loving the deliverance really is. Yeah. They're scared of that. But yeah. when, if you do it, if you get to that other side, it's beautiful. That's it right. Really is. That's right. So um, let's talk a little bit about what God has delivered you from. Okay. He, so he, you um, mentioned depression. Yeah, yeah depression for one. Uh, he's delivered me from adultery. He's delivered me from fornication. He's delivered me from lying. He's delivered me from a lot of the things that are in Galatians 5, 19, and 20. Yeah. And Period. Yeah, and, I, and so people probably are hearing this and they're going, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, Th how, how does point. that work? And, and I mean, because let's face it, all the things you just listened, a lot of people are going through. Yes, and, and according to Galatians 5, the, the flesh wars against the spirit, mm -hmm. and the spirit wars against the flesh. Well, why does that happen, Pastor? So we, the flesh, don't do what we want to do. We do God's will if we follow the spirit. That's the problem. That's the issue. And prior to the deliverance, I was only following my, following my flesh. So would you say that by doing that, you were opening certain doors for the enemy to come Correct. in? Oh, yes, ma'am. That's what we do when mm -hmm. we follow the flesh. We give opportunity for the devil to come in, the enemy, the adversary, call him whatever you like, to come in and, and just hint, uh, uh, wreak havoc in your life. That's, that's the best way I can put it. But when you are totally delivered, you have the covering in, of God and the protection of his Holy Spirit and, and the armor of God. You put on that armor of God. Mm -hmm. When he shows them darts at you, yeah, you, you just block them. You just can and give him praise. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I think about David. The, the Lord's been reminding me about David and Goliath a lot here lately. <laughs> right. You know, and because he knew his God, yes. he, had a, he had an intimate relationship with him. He said, "I, you know, I've slain that lion and the bear," mm -hmm. and and you know, it's like he walks up to. Goliath and I mean who knows how tall that dude was he right. was huge right. Right. and little David was the smallest among his brothers and you know and then Saul offers him his armor which I think <laughs> is really interesting it was way too big too heavy and yet we think about the armor of God which is the high priestly yes uh, really being outfitted as a high priest because David magnified the priest and the king Hallelujah. that we're to walk in. That's right. So, you know, that armor is important. Is important. Extremely important. Yes, ma'am. Because it gives us the tools. The, the scripture says to fight the adversary. Uh -huh. Because I, this is what helps me. Because I, I got, I was, ang I, I was mad at people because of what I saw, how like the world is coming and how they're living and mm -hmm. things like that. So I'm angry because you know better. The Bible says you should do this. You should right. be this way. And he reminded me, read the verse again. Read the verse again, he tells me. And I, so he does that to me. So I read it again. And it says, I fight, we fight not against the flesh and the blood, mm -hmm. but against spiritual wickedness. So it's not the person. Right. It's the spirit we should be attacking yeah. and rebuking. Absolutely. We should be loving the person. Yeah. <laughs> so right. that helps me with the compassion. That helps me with not being mad at the person for when they're being used or when they mess up or when they do things they know they're not supposed to do. I tell them it's not you. you you've been used. 
Right. And that way it helps me have compassion for them and love for them. So when you were going through depression, was this because of, of what happened to you there? Yes, the ma'am. It was because of the wheelchair. It was because of the uncertainty of my walk with God. Mm -hmm. All of that combined was the depression. Um, the, the fact that I was on so many drugs, yeah. um, pharmaceutical drugs, mm -hmm. that are just as bad as any other. I just want to point that out. Well, people don't realize that far, the far, word pharmacy comes from pharmacia, which if you, teach, if you search it out, teach, it's witchcraft. Teach, that's right. Teach, <laughs> that's what we found out. Yes. Yeah. So it's so, meant to keep us in the state. Yeah. My wife said, honey, you're a zombie. Mm. And so, and I'm not going to lie, I, I fought her for a minute. I said, look, I've been on this. These, these people have been taking care of me for this long. They've been doing, they know what they're doing. And, you know, I'm fine. <laughs> no, and she's like, honey, they're killing you. And then I heard a voice. You prayed for a wife. She's here. Now you're going to listen to her or not? I don't know whose voice it was. That's what I heard. And I said, okay, I'm going to listen to her. And because I listened to her, no longer am I taking any of those things. Hallelujah. Because she put her trust in God. She and put not her man. trust in God. That's right. And she said, these, mm. you don't need these. And so I listened. Do I still have pain? Yes. Do I still fall? Yes. But I'm, 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 I'm aware. I'm, I'm intuitive. God can use me. I'm not a zombie anymore. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And again, you're in the process. You're in the healing process. You've reached a certain place Yes. right now. But yes. I, I believe, <laughs> and I can see that, that he's going to bring it to its fullness. Hallelujah. He will bring it to its yes, fullness he because he needs warriors like you. Hallelujah. You yes, ma'am. That, that are <laughs> ready to go. Yeah, so, because we have power. Yes. I'm, I, I really want us to understand this. God gives us power in in his walk mm -hmm. and believing in him. We're not supposed to be timid and bowing right. down to the adversary. We're supposed to be standing up to him and telling him, get thee behind me and resisting him. Because if we resist him, yes. he will flee. Amen, amen. And so, you know, there's an intimacy that comes with the Lord that, I, I know for me it came with knowing the names. The, the, the names that, that, they, that, that they were known by. Yeah, Yahshua, the, Elohim. Right. <laughs> and it, there's, there's something Jehovah. about the intimacy yes. that comes with that. Yes. I, matter of fact, we, one of our programs on uh, Living on a Narrow Path, we have two segments that are dedicated to the names of God. Mm -hmm. And so they are extremely important because he says, call me by my name. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So, so that, and so when we're in our prayer and when we're talking to him, we need to know his name and we need to call him by the name. And what's good about it, there's so many. There's so many good ones. And the one I love the best, I, I know it's not in know this in the new, he says, call me Abba, uh -huh. Father. Yes. That's the yes. one I love. Daddy. <laughs> daddy. Come yeah. on, Daddy. Yeah. I like Daddy. <laughs> Amen. That's the one I like. Yes, you know, I, when I think about this, because, so, I, you know, I've had people say, it doesn't really matter. He knows who we're, who we're talking to. And I'm going, mm -hmm. yeah, to some degree. <laughs> but I said, if you really want an intimate relationship, oh, mm -hmm. then you call him by the name his mama called him. That's right. The name that that's God by his Holy Spirit gave him. Yahweh yeah. gave it to him. Yes. And I think about, because I'm from Texas, and in Texas, especially in Central Texas, I mean, all the names that we know here, like Guadalupe, it's like the Guadalupe. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Lano and Sidiano. Right, you yes. know, And they're proud of it. And I'm like, come on, guys, you know, <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, there's something significant here. And people kind of like, when I say that, they're like, oh, you know, well, see, you're just be, being picky. Because I'm not New Mexican, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of, I, you know, it's, the name matters. It does it matter. Does it does matter. Yes, and I mean, how many of us as parents have went before the Lord for the names for our children or grandchildren? You know, to yes, ask what, what is the name that you want? What do you want for him? And right. so the names that our parents give us are important unless the Lord changes that. But but they, are, they have meaning. Yes, ma'am. And so... Um, 
which was in, to... which was important for me as well because the what I lived as the name I lived as is not my birth name, mm. and I never I didn't know my birth name until I was forty eight years old. Really, I, I want to discover a little bit more about that, <laughs> but we've got to we, uh, we'll come back and do that. Yes, man. We just want to remind you. Um, We've got a prayer line, and it's 505-345-4165. And you can call us Monday through Friday. And listen, you know, it's an honor for us to pray for you. And I, and I mean that from my heart. It's an honor to pray for people because, you know, each one of us is his creation and an and expression of who God is. So when, when we pray for each other, there's something that happens in the spirit realm. So call us and know that, you know, if you're going through something and you don't know where to turn, you can call us. We will pray the word of God over you. We, we believe that he does answer prayer. And he, he says he will perfect those things that concern us. So give us a call, 505-345-4165. We'll be right back after this. What path does God have planned for you? Let the Holy Spirit direct your steps, enabling you to walk along the path of peace. Join us and build a relationship with the Word of God. Living on the Narrow Path with Pastor Billy, Tuesdays 10.30 p.m. and Thursdays 5.30 a.m. here on KCHF TV 11. Well, welcome back. I'm Linda Tiano here with Pastor Billy Williams from Unity Christian Fellowship. And uh, again, he's got a program right here on KCHF TV 11, Living on the Narrow Path. And it airs Tuesdays, 10.30 p.m. and Thursdays at 5.30 a.m. And I encourage you to tune in. Uh, Pastor, uh, we were talking about how you d found out about who you really were. Yes what your name really was. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about that. Well, uh, in short, uh, I, 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 I was not raised by my birth parents. I was um, uh, given away uh, when I was one and a half. Mm. So my birth parents uh, gave me away. Um, I, I guess I could say it, I was, I was sold as a child. Mm. on the black market. Oh, really? So wow. there's no, I have no uh, adoption paperwork. I have no paperwork to back me up at all whatsoever. It, it has and still is uh, a burden because I can't even get a passport because oh, wow. what I was, I have nothing, I never lived as my birth name. And so uh, I've always lived Billy Williams. And so that's not my birth name. <laughs> so we just found that out. And so I, when, we, when we looked for the adoption paperwork and when my mother passed, we, um, a, a close friend of my mom was looking through the stuff and she said, oh, I found some paperwork, Billy, this could be it. This could be what you need to get all, everything yeah. taken care of. And there was no adoption. Oh. But there was a phone number for Ain't Say Ran. And that's what I called her, Aunt Sarah Ann, and she lived in Las Vegas. And so I contacted her, and she, she was able to explain to me everything and how everything went wow. down. And she was with my mother when it happened. And they brought me into the hotel room. It was a sleep. She said it was an old, run-down motel. They brought me into the motel, and they exchanged the money or something like that. I can't really remember, but I was sold as a baby. And so I was birth William Collins and my real, my living, my name I live by is Billy Williams. So I, 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 can't, <laughs> I can't help but think about how blessed you were at that point in time, because if that happened today. There's no telling, right? Yeah. I mean, when we talk about black market today, yes. it has a whole Slate, different whole, whole, connotation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, you, God you, protect. He gave you Christian parents. Yes, yes. Amazing. Immediately, yes. He yes. had a, he had his mark on you. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Yes, and I could see several times where I, I I should have been dead. I can think of several times in the streets of Los Angeles where I was living out of a car, and I I, I should have been dead. I I've, I've had a I one day I was looking for my niece, 
in California and I stopped by, I stopped at the corner. I was like, have you seen such and such? And they was like, no, we haven't seen it, but open your car. And so they robbed, they got in the car with a gun to my head and mm. robbed me. There was been several occasions where I am not supposed to be here. Mm. But just because but God's mercy and his protection, <laughs> mm -hmm. I am here. Why am I here? Because he wants me to teach Matthew yeah. 7. That's, all, that's how I look Amen. at it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, so you, you then, you also uh, try, decided to go and have your DNA done. I did. I, yes. I, I, um, uh, hi, Dr. Shelby Walker. Dr. Shelby Walker is the lady who helped me. Uh, with with all of this, with with finding my birth parents, with um, she was the investigator who helped uh, set up everything uh, through the Great Foundation. Uh -huh. they're, they're a foundation that help people who don't know who their parents are, who don't have a DNA understanding. You work with the Great Foundation. The Great Foundation will help you find your parents. And so, thank you, Dr. Shelby Walker, for, for and thank you, God, for sending me to her. And she helped me find. She's the one who helped me get everything accomplished and we we did um sign up on ancestry as well yeah mm -hmm. and you what did you find out there Woo. Uh, I, <laughs> I i found out that i'm a mixed <laughs> i'm, a, I'm well, mixed up are. a whole lot of stuff <laughs> hallelujah i'm jew i'm part jewish I, I'm, I'm part european and i'm also part nigerian so mm. that's why i like wearing that my, my African guard yeah. because that is part of my heritage. I'm yeah. trying to embrace all of me. Yeah. When you learn out who you are, you want to embrace all of it. Uh -huh. And not just the birth. When you learn who you are in God, Amen. you learn yep. to embrace yes. all of him. Yes. All of him. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, he, you know, you had mentioned in, in when I looked over what you sent to us that you had considered suicide. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, when I first got in the wheelchair, oh, prior to the wheelchair, um, I was just not happy. And it was because of the choices I was making, because the way I was taught is I can make these choices and I would still be okay. No one warned me that when I make these choices, I'm going to have consequences to these choices. And so I'm experiencing all these consequences because I'm making all these terrible choices. And so I was fed up. And I was like, if it don't get no better than this, I'm done. I'm ready to do it. I'm going I'm, I'm to do it today. And I would always make a plan to do it. But then I, something would happen. I wouldn't do it. I got chicken once. I had the gun in my hand, and I had it up to my head. And I said, I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to do it this time. I need an answer. I need an answer. I kept saying that. And this that. was while you were married. I mean, no, this was, before. this was in between my three wives. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this before God, I, I surrendered all the way. Okay. And this is when I'm fighting. This was before the marriage. Yes. Okay. So I was, I, she married me in the wheelchair. That's, mm. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> she, she, she had the vision of me hugging her, the guy standing, but I was in the wheelchair. So, yeah. So no, this was prior to that wedding. And, and so I said, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, I need an answer. I need an answer. And I just wouldn't do it. I couldn't pull it. And then I heard. Good. I have more for you. Wow. And now that's and that was that. And then I didn't. I, I and I started talking to him just regular, not prayers, not oh no no. Show me then. So Ta I started. Ta you, I yeah. started talking to him <laughs> like and, that. And uh, how did you meet your wife? On on the on online. 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 Okay. On a dating site. All sure right. did. So she knew. Everything? Yeah, she knew I was in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. There was no, I didn't hide anything. Yeah, so how long knew. after you were married did you start this uh, healing process? Uh, the, it, it took about uh, mm -hmm. five years into the marriage where I, I was able to go without the wheelchair uh, as much. Uh -huh. um, so again, I can't walk long distances. I, you know, right. I, still, I still use the cart maybe in the supermarket. <laughs> So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something to you, okay. all right? Okay, okay, here we I've, go. I've been doing this Give a lot lately because people say, I can't. Yes, ma'am, come on. Give it to me. 
You can. I can. And okay. I will be. And I will be. I Change will be able words. to yes, walk long distances. I will be able to walk long distances. Because you, Lord, distances have enabled me. <laughs> because you have allowed me to. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because yeah. I was once in the chair. Yes. All day, every mm. day. 13 years. Honey says 14. I don't know if it's 14 or 13. <laughs> I, but I've been saying 13. She's been saying 14. Ah. I don't know which one it is. But 13 years, yeah. I was in the wheelchair. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And he delivered me. A work from, in progress, like I said. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So all those years being confined and then yes. the depression. Yes. Um, being delivered from the suicide. Yes. Yes. And so when when did you make the transition that you have that you're into now? It was at 30, um, 35, I'm thinking 35, 36. It started with a Nurse Lee. I don't know if she's still around. She's in California. Hi, Miss Nurse Lee. <laughs> she told me, she said, Billy, you're killing yourself. I'm in the wheelchair. I'm alone. I'm depressed. I'm drinking maybe a fifth a day. I'm, I'm, I'm just, just, I'm just destructing. And she said, you're killing yourself. I thought you were a believer in God. That's what she said to Whoa, me. Whoa, ouch. My nurse, my <laughs> nurse. She says, I thought you were a believer in God, Billy. And I said, I am, Nurse Lee. She said, well, you sure ain't acting like it. <laughs> so I said, I said, are you supposed to be talking to me like this? And she said, yes, because God says, you're killing yourself. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to continue to kill yourself when you leave out my office? Or are you going to start to make a change? It was then I started to make a change. I didn't really listen totally until 35. But that day, I stopped alcohol. I stopped cigarettes. I stopped the cocaine. I stopped a lot of things that I was doing that was hindering my life to hear the truth. Mm. And so I, I, thanks, Nurse Lee. Thank God yeah. for, thank God Amen. for sending Nurse Ministering Lee Ministering angels. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. And that was the wow. starting process. So around 35, 36, that's when I took hold. That's when I had the, the aha moment with him. Mm -hmm. And I yelled. I was screaming to the top of my lungs, show me. I've been serving you since the day. He said, nope, you've been serving the false doctrine. Mm -hmm. There's a true doctrine. Yeah. And here it is. And so I, I embraced it as 36, 35, 36. So as a pastor, um, but when, when did you begin to be quickened to the whole idea of, of what I call our Hebrew, Hebrew heritage through the, through the word? Oh, because every time uh, Jesus would speak in the New Testament, he would always refer to the scripture, to the mm -hmm. to the law, to mm -hmm. the, the the old in scriptures in the New Old Testament. Right. And so I was like, okay, so it must be something to it because Jesus is using it. He is using it to teach. He is using it to live by. He is using it, you know, to to share. Mm -hmm. So I I embrace both. I embrace the Old Testament and the New Testament, knowing that it's part of our heritage. And He says that we are the inheritance. Amen. Of Abraham. Amen. 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 So we are we that's how we have the power. That's how we're able to tap in to Yahshua and Amen. Jehovah. And don't don't you find it interesting because I mean really when you think about Yeshua with with his, you know, the Sermon on the Mount yes. and when he was talking to people, um, for us as Westerners, we don't we don't we can't read between the lines. But he didn't have to fill in all of that because it was already there. It was already there. The people knew it. Yes. They learned Torah from the time they were, you know, Babies. little bitty. Yes. And so they knew it. It was memorized. It was in them. That's why he said, you know, put it into your heart. Put it in your heart. And guard your heart. Guard it. Protect yeah. it. That's how important his word is to yeah. us. That's how important his instruction mm -hmm. is to us. Yeah. He wants us to guard it at all costs. Amen. That's why I tell Guard your heart at all costs. Guard that instruction God has told you. You know, when I first uh, heard somebody say that what the Torah is about, you know, people think it's legalistic, but it says, no. Oh. In the Hebrew, it means loving instruction. Hallelujah. And I thought, oh, that's, that's so right. good. Because yes. that's Abba. Yeah, that's Abba. Huh, our <laughs> Father. Thank you. Yeah. I, mean, I was having a discussion. Daddy. <laughs> I, I guess it was a discussion the other day about, you know, some people say, well, you know, I have a trouble with the God of the Old Testament. 
And, you know, that can relate to the God of the New Testament. And I'm like, uh, they're the same. They're he's the same. he's God. He doesn't change. <laughs> he doesn't change. <laughs> he's same. always been Always loving. been that way. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Wow. So that, that, that teaching then and all of that understanding, then you're being able to relay that Correct. to people. In a, di in, an, in a different way as well. Uh -huh. we, don't have, uh, we, <clears throat> we don't have a building. Mm. Okay. okay. Um, we are definitely an online church. Uh -huh. um, and, and so we, we're not confined. If you, I, I tell people we have a website. Talk to us. If you want me to bring you communion, I'll bring you communion. You yeah. want me to come to you and pray, we'll come to you in prayer. We believe we're the church. And so we want to operate as that we the church. Right. Not, not that it's wrong. I'm not saying that anything's wrong with no, a building. No. I'm just saying our ministry, the way God has, is leading me to teach, is to teach that you, everywhere you go, are the temple of God. Amen. Everywhere you Amen. go. So you are in church every day. I think, don't you think with this Asbury revival and the things that have been happening, that it's like Yahweh is kicking down fences and walls. Yes. Because he, he's not contained no. within the four walls of no. anything. And, and, and Yeshua even said to the, the Pharisees, he said, you are rendering the word of God to be of no effect because of your vain traditions. Come on. Amen. You know, it's like, okay, so, you know, will we dare? Will we dare to let him be who he really is? Or are right. we going to still try to keep him in a box? I'm daring. And, I'm and, <laughs> you know, and I, I love the, the Hebrew uh, way of talking about the congregation, and not the church or the kirk, yes. but the kahal. Huh. And it's a living, breathing. breathing. Come on. Yes, sir. That's us. Yeah, it's us. It's us. It's a, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Amen. And that's what we try to encourage. And, and you're taking God with you. Yes, yes. Everywhere you go. Amen. So operate in his spirit. There we operate go. Operate in his love. Well, we've got more to come. We want you to call us if you have a prayer need. The number's right there on the bottom of the screen. We'll be back with Pastor Billy right after this. Hi, I'm Robert Jeffress, Bible teacher on Pathway to Victory, and I'm looking forward to being in Albuquerque to help celebrate 39 years of KCHF TV 11 broadcasting the gospel all across New Mexico. Through the power of media, this ministry continues to grow, joining local churches and answering hundreds of prayer calls. Please join me Thursday, June 1st, 2023, as Sun Broadcasting, KCHF TV 11, continues to build your community, reach out to the lost, and prepare people for eternity. Join us Thursday, June 1st for KCHF TV's 39th anniversary banquet, Preparing People for Eternity, with guest speaker Dr. Robert Jeffress, host of Pathway to Victory. For tickets and sponsorship opportunities, call 505-345-1991 or visit kchftv.org. What path does God have planned for you? Let the Holy Spirit direct your steps enabling you to walk along the path of peace. Join us and build a relationship with the Word of God. Living on the Narrow Path with Pastor Billy, Tuesdays 10.30 p.m. and Thursdays 5.30 a.m. here on KCHF TV 11. Linda Tiano here with Pastor Billy Williams and... Um, you know, Pastor Billy, we were talking about, you know, your church is online. Yes. Your, your, your services, your teachings. The teachings are all online. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And how, how can people get in touch with you on that? Okay, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's very simple. We're at Unity Christian Fellowship, I mean, unitycfnm.org. And you can contact and leave contact information. You can ask for requests for communion. You can ask requests for the uh, pastor to come see you, to pray with you. Uh -huh. um, we, we believe that, not that anything's wrong with the church building, right. but God has, has called us to teach, to live as the church. Right. So we, you and I, are the church. Our bodies are the temple of God. Amen. And so that's, that's how we're trying to live this, this ministry, as, as with no, no walls, we're yeah. free to serve yeah. God. 
Amen. And that's what we're trying well, to do. Well, and it takes, I mean, not everybody's going to walk into a church. Some people that's are right. so broken. That's correct. That they, they are afraid. They are afraid. Yes, ma'am. And yet, and you know, hurt and broken, like you said. Yes, ma'am. And we've been given these tools to be able to reach into people's actual homes. Yes. And I to mean, be able to speak into their hearts. And, yes. you know, so it, it's, it's everybody together doing their part, doing what the oh, Lord man. tells them to do. Yeah. All Absolutely. different parts coming together. Yes, yeah. Um, so, you know, you said something earlier um, about prayer. Yes. And that sometimes we can pray, but it may not be God's will. Can you can you address that because I think yes, I think people struggle with that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So when I was when I realized that the parents who were raising me uh -huh. were not my parents, I asked God. I've always had a, a relationship with God since I was five years old. I mm -hmm. even asked the pastor, "I need to be baptized. You need to baptize me." <laughs> That's how I, I've always had a connection with yeah. God. And so um, I. I asked him, I said, okay, these are not my parents. I, I need, I want a hug from my parents. So God, I'm praying that you, we find my mother one day and I get to hug her. Mm. And so the book shows that it tells the story of that process of how that happened. And I got to the point where I, I was able to, I found my mother. And so the, the time is about to come and I'm, a, I'm, about to, I, I'm about to see her because we've made contact with her. And now my prayer is gonna be answered. I'm, a, I'm about to hug my mama <laughs> for the first time. I'm so excited. I found her and I'm just so excited. And then my brother, a week after we talked, calls me back and says, mom doesn't wanna see you. Oh, it hurts. Those, those words hurt just hearing them. And I said, what? Yeah. What do you mean she doesn't want to see me? I'm a good, I'm an ex-army. I'm, I'm a minister. Yeah. I'm a good guy. What do you mean she doesn't want to see me? And he says, she doesn't want to see you. And so right there, I had a choice to make. Mm -hmm. Do I get mad at God because my prayer wasn't answered because here I thought it was about to be answered? Or do I accept his will? Because there's only two things, my prayer not being answered and his will being done. I chose his will being done. And, and it helped me accept the fact that I was, I, I, I was rejected again. Mm -hmm. Not once. The yeah. same person has rejected me twice. And the Lord wanted to deal with that spirit of rejection. Yes, yes. So I can share it mm -hmm. and let people know, no, he can heal that. Amen. Huh, he can feel that. Hallelujah, yeah. right? And he prepared me. He gave me a mama to care, to care of me. He gave me a yes. daddy that took care of me. He gave me him that took care of me. So he let me know that although this happened, although you didn't get that one prayer, because he's answered, what, 100 or 200 other prayers. <laughs> this one he didn't answer, right? Right. No, I accept it. And so we have to be able to understand that all prayers are not answered at your, at your timing. Right. It's God's timing, and sometimes it's not answered at all. And he you have to be ex it, okay with that's that. That's right, and he can't supersede the will of another person. No, right, exactly. That's not my fault she didn't want to hug me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's on her. Yeah. I can't take that responsibility. Right. So you wrote a book. I did. Tell us about this. It's called Sold. It is. It is a life. It's about my life story. Yes, it is. It's about how I was acquired, uh, how the transaction took place and how I lived through the transaction and how I was able to deal with the ups and the downs and, the, you know, all the bad things that happened to mm -hmm. me throughout throughout my life. And it shows how God will restore us. It mm -hmm. shows how God now it's raw now. <laughs> it's, it's a raw book. So I, I mean, there, there, it, 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 it can be uh, in your face. Right. I'm going to be honest. It can That's be good. in your face. That's good. And so I, I tried not to hold too many punches. I wanted people to know what I was really feeling, mm -hmm. how I really felt. And so uh, it's, it describes everything. Uh, even mentions uh, how I was able to survive those, the, the situation with the narrow path. That's how I, it helped, the narrow path helped me through being sold.
So tell us a little bit more about you, what you see as the narrow path from that scripture. Okay, um, Matthew chapter seven, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus is talking to us. Mm -hmm. He is our savior, he's our Messiah, right, Yahshua? He, he, he is our, our deliverer. And so he tells us when the time comes for us to enter into the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. there are gonna be two ways, there are gonna be two gates. Only two. Well, that, that he's talking about here. He's talking about two gates, mm -hmm. one that is wide and gates that are narrow. And so he tells us in Matthew 7 that there's many on the wide and there's few on the narrow. But how do we get to heaven? It's the narrow. And so he's called me to show them this scripture so they can make a choice for themselves and understand what keeps them on the wide road and what would keep them on the narrow road. Jesus says, um, uh, those who do the will of my Father are on the narrow path. Amen. And so that's what we're trying to show people. Look, if you're living in the will of God, if you're learning and, and operating in his spirit, you will be on the narrow path. You have to make these choices, though, because the wide path is easy. The wide path is mm -hmm. everyone can ride, live on that path because it's an easy thing. But the narrow path is hard and few find it. And so what is it then that separates us from the path? Jesus tells us in verse 23, lawlessness. Mm -hmm. And so it's lawlessness that keeps us from the narrow path. So if we can obey and, and submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit and live in the righteousness of God, the lawlessness of the world won't take us back to the wide path. As you're sharing that, I'm thinking about um, we're in, in the... Um, Older Testament, where it talks about ask for the ancient path. Who? And that's a godly path. That's mm -hmm. a holy path. That's right. I ask for the ancient path. And then in another place, it says um, that you will walk the path and you will hear a voice behind you. Yes, ma'am. Saying, This is the way. This is the way. Walk. Here. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. That's what we're saying. Say la. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, <laughs> Hallelujah. It, really? I mean, it's just, Ooh, whew, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. I, you know, for people that are listening today, what would you say to them? Read God's word for yourself. I'm not saying not listen to other people. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you need to learn it for yourself mm -hmm. so when you hear something that is not right, right. you won't follow it. Exactly. Because there is deception in the world. The Bible speaks of it all the time. There's deception. And that deception is to trick us to do things that God has not ordained us to do. And so if you learn his word, Someone can't tell you, oh, God said yeah. this. <laughs> and oh, no, he said this, right? Yeah. And so the best thing I could tell someone is to trust God's word mm -hmm. on your own. Learn it. If you don't understand it, get some uh, materials that will help you understand the word. Let him work through you while you're learning the word on your own. So then when you hear these pastors, when you hear these people testifying, you can be on board with it when he's right or her, when she's right, or you can pray when it's not. Amen. Amen. Well, and thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin, sin against thee. Sin against thee. And so, <laughs> you know, so how do we get that word hidden in our hearts? It's by reading by the word. Reading the it's word. not, you know, you, yes, we hear the word, but when we take it in with our eyes, yes. and then it's in our, hearts, in our hearts, then it overrides the intellect. Correct. And that's, um, to me, we have to ask the Holy Spirit to be our interpreter. That's correct. To say, show me. Show me, Lord. That's it. 
That's it. And yes, he ma'am. will. He'll yes, send he you will. on all kinds of little. I wouldn't. I, rabbit trails, not the right right <laughs> word, but I mean, but he, you know, he'll Lessons. send you off. He'll like, send you off teaching you. Yeah, yes, he exactly. Will. He is our teacher, and yes, the he Word will. will be our teacher. The, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes right. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Praise That's what God. I would tell him. Get in your Word and let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. It's a lamp unto our feet. Amen. So again, you are on. KCHF TV. Yes, I am. Living on the Narrow Path, Tuesdays at 10.30 p.m. and Thursdays at 5.30 a.m. So what are those like? What are those programs like? Oh, it's, it's um, uh, I'm writing the book now to go with it called Living on the Narrow Path as well. Mm -hmm. And it gives, uh, I have uh, a series of programs. I uh -huh. believe it's 40. Okay. And it will direct how the what he showed me when he was teaching me the narrow mm. path I, I i break it down mm -hmm. scripture by scripture it's over 130 scriptures that we use mm -hmm. uh it's not my opinion the script the the program has nothing to do with my opinion all i do is show you what it says in his word and then it's on you to have your relationship with him yeah and to search the scripture. And to search the scripture mm -hmm. for yourself. What I'm doing, what God has asked me to do, is to lead them to the scriptures and let him talk to him, talk to the person through the scriptures. So I'm a lead. The program leads them to the scriptures that talk about living on the narrow path. So as we close today, would you look into this camera? Okay. And would you help people understand how they can have that relationship with Yeshua? Okay. This is what you need to do. You need to humble yourself and you need to tell him that you can't do this walk on your own. You need to tell him with all your might, you need to express all your, and tell him what you really feel and tell him you wanna know him for yourself. Mm -hmm. You want him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. You want him to show you his word so you can live according to him. That's all you have to do. And when you seek him, you will find him. When you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. You have to put more time into his word than say the television, ouch. You need to put more time into his word than whatever else you're gonna do. <laughs> you need to personally involve yourself in him. And let him talk to you, and he'll and he'll he will talk to you, and you have to listen to him. But put put your trust in God's word. Amen. That's what I would say. Amen. I want to thank you so much for thank being with us for today. What a me. delight! <laughs> oh my God! And, you know, and for those of you viewing, as Pastor Billy said about push pressing in, do you know what the joy of that is? Is that he will begin to speak to you, yes, he will. and yes, he, he will. you will feel him wrap his arms of love around yes, you. He will. He will lead you. He will give you little thoughts that is strictly yes, he by his spirit. Yes, he, will. he loves you that much yes, and that intimately that he will direct your path. So if you need prayer today, please call us 505-345-4165. And as we leave this time together today, yes, God does answer prayer. And I just want to leave you with the, with the ironic blessing which says, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his everlasting peace, his shalom. Be blessed today. Know his love. Shalom, shalom.